Hey everyone, it's TB Shores. It's May the 6th, 2016. It's 11, 11 a.m. Let me show you that. Right over there in the corner. 11, 11 a.m. Um, before we get into any more studies, because I know the Lord's taking me back to Exodus, um, and we're going to trail off from there into understanding some other things. Uh, the best that I understand where he's leading me right now. Uh, sometimes I, I kind of think we're going in one direction and he takes me in another and then brings me back to where I thought I was going. So um, I just try to go as the Lord leads. And that brings me to my video this morning. Um, we know that we've been covering a lot of information concerning the month of May and specifically um, this pagan feast time of Beltane. Um, the last two videos were all about us looking at verses in Amos 8 and how they connect back to Exodus and even show us um, implications of the month of May and even implications of Beltane or false god worship where we see the new moon come into play and what it all speaks there about uh, what we read thereafter. And I'm not going to get into that now. We've covered that already. But the point in this video is I want to back up to April the 24th. Now, April the 24th, let me scroll down a little bit. Falls between this video and this one. The Lord had led me. I had just finished the church, the first judge, wise and foolish. And the Lord had led me to go into some dreams. And as I was preparing, because I knew the Lord was taking me to discuss the midnight cry, and how it connects to uh, connects what happened in Exodus at the Passover to what we see going on with the, the wise and the foolish with the midnight cry. But in between those days, uh, this was the 23rd. This was the 25th. The 24th was a Sunday. And I was studying, preparing, trying to refresh myself and let the Lord lead me in what I was to cover on this. And while I was doing that. I had received a call. That um, my phone was in the other room. That I didn't answer. And a message was left. And of course y'all that's been watching my videos. You know that it was Carl. And I want to note. Uh, in my notebook I wrote down. April 24, 2016. That he called at 1.11 p.m. And that he left his message about. May Day, how the Lord had him digging into May Day, and how that May Day, he was told by the Lord that it was the great cry. And certainly we can conclude from that that the Lord is, has drawn our attention to events in May. Now, I have been focused on May 5th. Um, I will be perfectly honest with you. I was hoping to see yesterday a specific occurrence that would be recognizable by all of us. But we have to remember that we are to, to follow the Lord's lead. We are to be obedient, put out what he would have us to put out. And it's not for us to always know where he's taking it or what he means by it, because he, he a lot of times brings that to us later. And I'll give you a good example of that. Last year at this time, the Lord had drawn my attention to Passover. And from what I felt he was showing me, I just felt, oh my goodness, he must be showing me that everything begins the, excuse me, the uh, catching away of the bride. And of course, we know that sets in motion what's to take place thereafter about the harvest. And of course, there are some events that take place during all this 
that are going to be horrific on this earth and affect mankind in a very dramatic way. But anyway, I was seeing what I thought was the time that all this would be set in motion was last year at Passover. And there were many of us that felt the Lord was showing us Passover, and he was. But what I come to learn after the fact, because he took me through studying about Passover and what all is meant through Passover uh, into studying about the second Passover, which was um, the time of Hezekiah. And Hezekiah, of course, was the king that came in and he um, removed everything in the kingdom that had defiled um, the temple and everything throughout the kingdom that had went against God. So um, the Lord was showing me what I had come to know as the time of Hezekiah. And what I come to learn after that was that the Lord wasn't per se showing me a time frame. He was showing me the understanding of an event to understand what Passover means and that we are waiting on an event that is part of Passover. I'm going to get into explaining that probably um, when I pick up in my next few videos where I think the Lord has taken me now. But my point in saying all this is that the Lord is definitely showing us something. We may not understand the entirety of, of what we would like to understand, um, but I never let these things discourage me because I know when the Lord is showing me something. Um, there's no mistake in it. Uh, I seek the Lord every day. I dedicate every day to Him. He is my entire focus of the day. Um, yes, I have to break away from that and take care of, you know, getting my family fed and housework chores. And I pick my grandkids up several days a week from school. But as much time as I possibly can, I focus my day on the Lord and seeking Him and study and in whatever manner I feel he's leading me. So it's always clear to me when the Lord is leading me in something and when he's showing me something, but it may not always be clear to me as to the what or the why of it. And that's where, where our patience in the Lord comes in because we are to wait on the Lord. We're not to run ahead and say, oh, this is it or that is it. We're not to try to make things um, be what we want them to be. We're not to di get disappointed or discouraged if it's not what we expected because we do not know the mind of God. We are still in this flesh and we still are working with the human mind. Yes, the Holy Spirit leads us and yes, the Lord shows us things, but we are still limited. We are still on this side of the veil and we're not going to see things clearly, not as not clearly yet as we will. But um, my point in saying all this is I know that there are some who are discouraged because we've not seen anything happen thus far. Uh, we've not seen that event that sets everything into motion. But, you know, we have to wait on the Lord. We just have to keep seeking his face and letting him guide and letting him work and trusting that even though we don't understand that he has a plan and we are following him. Um, he had me very focused on May the 5th. And like I mentioned earlier, I certainly had hoped to see something that we would all recognize. But to my knowledge, now I've not looked at the news or anything. So to my knowledge, there's not anything um, that would grab my attention.
but then I have not gone looking for it. So I'm just waiting on the Lord, I guess is the best way to put that. Um, I don't go looking for it. I don't go trying to make something fit the occasion that I thought was arising. I just wait on the Lord. And that's what we have to do. And I know we're tired. And I know that we get discouraged when we don't see what we thought we were expecting. But it's all about our faith. It's all about us growing in him. And we must continue to to follow his lead, even if we don't understand it. We don't understand the what and the why of it. We must follow his lead and we must trust, even though we can't see what he's exactly he's pointing us to. We must trust that there is a reason for it. Just like last year, when I thought the Lord was showing me Passover was the time that all was going to take place. Uh, and I come to understand there was a lot deeper things that the Lord was trying to teach me through that. And, and I do believe that may be part of what we're experiencing now. There's a lot deeper things that we are to learn. One thing that I think it's important to note is where we learned in Amos 8 that um, where we learned in Amos 8, I'm sorry, I, I wanted to look that up because I hate misquoting scripture. I can't remember everything. But we learned in Amos 8.10 that the Lord says, and I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. And if we look back, still in Amos, but chapter 5, verse 21, we can clearly see confirmation of the significance that the Lord puts on your feast days. Your feast days are days that, have, that man has brought into play. Not God's feast days those that man has brought into play. And this verse right here pretty much says it all. It's Amos 5, 21. I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Now, I looked up that word smell. And to make a long story short, I understand it to just be saying that the Lord will have no part of it. So, I think that we can see the Lord is teaching us some things through this. And we just need to be seeking him in understanding because he always shows us deeper things within as we continue to seek. And I'm going to cut this off here and I'll be back.